Hello, everyone. It's Friday. That means it's Chet with Mac. Uh, we're glad to have you. Thank you to everyone who watches us every weekend. We really appreciate your feedback. And for those of you that are new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Nadim, how's it going, sir? Doing good. How you yep. been doing? It's been a good week. Yeah. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a good week. It's been a, a good week. Some great strides. I'm I'm happy about this week. That's yeah. good. That's good. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> no, it's been, uh, I know I've said this before, but every week seems like it goes by faster. This week flew. It flew. Yeah, it, it just, uh, and I don't know what it is. I, I feel tired, like towards the end of the day, but the week goes by so fast. <laughs> um, but things are happening. You know, a lot of things are happening. I was, uh, I was actually, um, um, uh, in an interview call with with one of our offshore guys, and um, you know, I, I was amazed at how quickly we get things done. Like, you know, I mean, hiring people and interviewing and uh, figuring out the right people. I guess if you do it for a few years, you you kind of get the hang of it. <laughs> right, right. Uh, or or maybe it's just the uh, you end up taking more risks. <laughs> yeah, that too. That too. Um, but yeah, it's been uh, you know I was I was talking to uh, a prospect yesterday, and um, uh, you know he kind of reminded me of what uh, what goes through a lot of people's mind when it's time to decide uh, which MSP you're going to use. You know, yeah. So you know, first of all, everybody calls themselves an MSP. If they tech, tech, touch technology, they become an MSP. Um, so whether it's an MSP or an IT services provider, whatever it is, how do you choose the right that's provider? A, and that's, that's the question. question. So, and as I was talking to this prospect, it kind of occurred to me, it's like, you know what? We should make a video about this because a lot of people out there are looking for this. And I know we have this, one of these reports uh, that you can download off of our website and I'll put the link somewhere here. But um, you know, that's a, that's like, I think it's like five or 10 pages, something like that. And it's a lot of info in that report, but how should somebody select an, an NIT services provider? You know, that's, that's well, the question of the day. Well, and, and I'm glad you're actually bringing this up because, you know, uh, on the other side of what I do, for those of you that don't know, I'm the one that, you know, I call, I call many of you guys on the regular um, and I, you know, I call in the businesses and what I find is a lot of them choose your IT provider with one singular factor and that's price. And that's probably the most horrible way to choose yeah. the provider. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, you know, and, and the example that I uh, typically give people is you go to the doctor because, you know, you had some issue. The doctor said, well, uh, you need a bypass. Are you going to find the cheapest doctor to do the bypass? <laughs> uh, same thing goes with, uh, you know, uh, attorneys, you know, like, uh, you, you know, uh, you need an attorney in, in a certain, you know, uh, for a specific case. Do you go and look for the cheapest attorney you can find? It, it doesn't make sense. And then when we talk about technology, which is really the backbone of the business, that's correct. And people just go by price because they don't know anything else, right? Yeah. They don't know how to compare technology providers. Yeah. So what they do is they just choose the cheapest provider out there and then uh, they, they keep doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. You know, yeah. every, every time they choose a new provider, they base it on the cost and then it doesn't work and they go find another one based on the cost. And it's like, you know, doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. And that just doesn't work. And I think it's expounded by the fact that IT is not a regulated industry, right? Anybody can go out and claim anything they want. You have to do some homework, you know, to trying to find out how long a company has been in business, calling their references, uh, you know, what they say about them, uh, and, and, and just get to know the company, the process. 
you know, and we've talked about this uh, a while back. Uh, I think there's also a video about this is every IT services provider or MSP has five roles. And I, when I'm talking to a prospect, I go through these roles with them. And a lot of times it kind of lights them up because these are, these are the fundamentals of any IT services provider. You have the uh, centralized services, you have the project services, you have the technology alignment manager, you have the VCIO, and then you have reactive support. Most customers, prospects out there, all they know about is support. That's all they need is support. That's just one little thing. And that, that's not even the biggest thing. The no. biggest thing, the biggest, most impactful roles are the TAM and the VCIO. Yeah. which implement technology to reduce that ticket noise, that improve user performance, user interaction with technology. So basically those are the guys that are implementing the projects, doing the budgeting and figuring out how to put things in place that will minimize tickets because tickets are a cost. It's a cost to the MSP and it's a cost to the customer. Yeah. No matter how you slice it and slice it and dice it, it is a cost. Yeah. And I've seen prospects where they'll, you know, they'll be asking me, well, uh, how many tickets per day average do your techs handle? Or uh, uh, what is your response time? And I'm like, well, you know, those are those are metrics. But those are not the metrics you want to decide which MSP to use because the average number of tickets per tech per day should be very low. Now, typically in the industry, it's around 10 uh, hours is quite low. And, and the reason why we want it to be as low as possible is because the less tickets, the less noise, the less reactive stuff you're doing. No. Now, when you're doing less reactive stuff, that means it leaves you more room to do more proactive stuff. We have a limited number of resources to work with. If we put most of those resources into the reactive side of things, now we don't have enough resources for the proactive side of things. The TAM and the VCIO, that's the proactive side of things. And that's what I tell prospects is, Make sure whatever MSP you talk to, make sure they have these five roles in place. If the MSP is not bringing it up to you, ask them what are your roles. And if they don't know what their roles are, they don't even know their own business, much less <laughs> your business, to to be able to support it. So, this is you know this is one of those things that has been uh, sliced, diced, figured out. It's like a wheel. It's already been invented. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. These right. roles are the roles they are. Right. You know, if you work with technology, they are there. That's right. how it works. Large right. enterprises have figured this out. You know, their IT departments have figured this out. That's why they have a CIO in-house. That's why they have the technology al alignment managers. Yeah, they have a support department too, the help desk, which is a small part of it. But a lot of small businesses end up focusing everything on that help desk. And, and that's the wrong place to look at, to focus on. And I, so, I think, uh, you know, to your point, Nadeem, you kind of brought it up, is that I, I, I think the biggest issue for a lot of the small businesses is the lack of depth of information on uh, what it takes. And a lot of them just stay, they stay on break fix. And I think a lot of small businesses don't know that it takes so much more it just breaks big, you know. It, it's just not a hardware thing. So many other components, especially that, now, especially yeah, now, especially because now. Yeah. now security has become such a big part. It's the barrier around. to entry has risen for IT companies, yeah. and and that's why we are seeing a lot of consolidation, a lot of mergers and acquisitions, and you cannot secure a network if you're not proactive. Yeah. It's all in the process. A lot of times, you know, customers get hung up on, well, what kind of uh, tool do you use? You know, what kind of antivirus do you use? What kind of firewall do you use? These are just tools. 
it's not what the tool is, it's how you use the tool that matters. And and uh, I mean, just just a conversation I had uh, the other day with with a prospect, and they were like, they were down for a few days because their MSP shut down their machines because they discovered a virus, and 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 the owner of the business, the the, the CEO, couldn't get it out of the MSP what virus it was, when did it infect the network? I mean, he couldn't get the answer out of the MSP, so of course he fired the MSP. And and he was talking to me, and I was going through. It's like you know that's not the problem. The, the 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 tools they're using, and I think they were using WebRoot or but whatever the tool is, it doesn't matter. the The problem is the process that the MSP had. The MSP's process was broken. That's why that virus had been sitting on the network. That's why they discovered it when it was really the water was about to go above their head. And that's when they panicked and shut down everything because they didn't know it was there. They didn't know how long it's been there. They didn't know what damage it had already done. And being in a uh, healthcare industry, they cannot be down. Yeah. I mean, they lose funding. There's all kinds of stuff that happens. And 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 that's why I was talking to the the CEO over there and and figured out, you know, partially it was. It was the fault of management at the customer site because they were focusing too much on the tool set, not the process. Yeah. If the process is good, the tools really don't matter. You know, it's like if you go to to your mechanic and uh, you need an oil change, do you ask them what kind of lift they're going to use to lift your car? <laughs> Does it matter? Or what kind of what kind of wrench are you going to use to 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 uh, unbolt the drain bolt? I mean, does it matter? As long as he can get it done, that's all that matters, right? The process is what you're looking for, and and a lot of IT providers out there, the, especially the 10 minute M uh, MSPs out there, they don't have a good process in place. Uh, and that's another term that that you might want to be familiar with is the 10 minute MSP. What it boils down to is somebody goes to these IT expos, they buy a bunch of tools, and all of a sudden they call themselves an MSP. In 10 minutes, you can become an MSP. You can buy the tools right there at the expo, and you're an MSP. It doesn't make you one because you don't have a process yet. You don't have any. All you have is a tool. You don't have the process behind it, and that's where the break is. I think a lot of customers they're not looking from that perspective that it's the process that really matters I, I think that's what makes what we're doing here so essential we're really trying hard to educate the small business uh sector and just say hey this is what you have to look for uh one side of it is like you know like the day we were saying earlier one side of it is definitely the frugality which comes and bites you in the rear end after a while. But the other side of it is the fact that people just don't know. And then right. once you get that information like we're giving, now you can make a more educated guess, not educated guess, educated decision on who secures your network. You know, and uh, like I said, I call every day and some of the things that I hear, I'm like, man, it's just a matter of time before this one gets hit hard. I mean, seriously speaking, you don't ever want to say it out loud, but you, I think you're like, right, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's been times when uh, prospects have said, "Oh no, we don't need any changes. We're we're good where we are. We we you know we're happy with our provider." And then you find out, you know, you talk a little bit more, and then you find out just last week they had a breach, yep. and it's like. Well, you just said everything is fine. You just had a breach last week. And they just don't know. They're like, well, but yeah, but doesn't everybody? It's like, no, not everybody <laughs> has a breach. <laughs> it's it's not normal to have a breach. Uh, but they don't know any better. You know, and, and that's why we try to uh, put a lot of these educational videos and, yeah. and a lot of reports. Like on our website, you can download a lot of these reports that talk about, you know, certain things to look for when you're when you're going out to choose an MSP. And I'm not saying you'll choose us, you know, hopefully you'll choose Even us. You or should at least consider us. us. You should choose us, but <laughs> but uh 
But but my my goal is, and, and everybody's goal at PCSN is to help everybody make the right decision. Now, for some companies, we are not the right choice. I mean, if you have 300 users, we are not the right choice. You need to build your own in-house team. If uh, if if you are, you know, 20, 50, 100 users, yes, we can definitely help you. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the thing is, you know, that break-fix model is gone. The, the industry is consolidating. The barrier to entry is high. That break-fix model is gone. You cannot do security on the break-fix model. That is not how it works because the break-fix model would be you get infected by something or you have a breach and then you reach out to an IT company to fix it. That's the break-fix model. For security, it does not because the reason it doesn't work is you do not want to have the breach in the first place. And that's what we are trying to do for IT is, and, and that's why we have the five roles is we do not have to have, have to wait for that breakdown to fix it. We need yeah. to fix it before it breaks down because yeah. the cost for that is much lower than after Having something breaks after down. Yeah. Even as simple as a computer, you know, you have your computer, uh, would you rather upgrade it while it's working so you can re replicate everything on the new computer as it is on the old computer? Or would you rather wait for it to die on you and then try to figure out and configure the new computer to look kind of like what the old computer looked like? The second way is a lot more painful and time consuming. The first way is the way to go. So you yeah. do it proactively and yeah. now it's much easier. I mean, you can just image the machine, right? It's that easy. So so that's the thing is uh, I would encourage everybody to download that report, go through it, and that will just help you figure out, differentiate you know the 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 real it service providers from the 10 minute msps because <laughs> there's quite a bit of 10 minute msps out there listen the 10 minute msps are the ones that are getting breached too when your msp is getting breached that's an issue i, I can't tell you the number of times i've called people and like yeah our msp got breached like yeah. yo that's a problem <laughs> that's that's yeah. not that's not good you know and and, and it, it comes you know, full circle to what the dean was talking about is that when you don't have a process, you just spring up, you know, with a few tools. And what I love about PCSN, you know, when I first came here, I was like, you know, I knew about other IT companies, but I love the fact that Nadim had a process put together that was more proactive. I screamed out from the mountaintops because I didn't even understand what that meant until later on down the line. Like, it's better to just be prepared than to have to try to fix something after the fact, and I think a lot of businesses think that, well, if it happens, we can fix it. Now, in this climate, good luck, you know? <laughs> good luck coming out of that unscathed or without, you know, coming out thousands of dollars because the bad guys have become so advanced. You know, it's almost like, uh, if you know, kind of like going to, you know, towards being reactive. Let's say your network switch dies and you want to get a new network switch. If you had the right MSP in place, they would have told you ahead of time, hey, there is a shortage in the market. We need to yeah. order this switch now because in yep. two months, the warranty is expiring on the old switch. That's borrowed time. So let's order a switch now. If you don't and your switch dies, now what do you do? Well, now you order the switch. And you know what? Good luck. You're not going to get it before six months. Not At least six months. I mean, there's, there's customers that, so we, we usually budget for customers around 1.5 years ahead of time, right? So there's customers that are waiting for eight months for equipment. It's back ordered. What are you gonna do? Nobody has it. And it's not like just one manufacturer. It's, it's all of them, all, all of the major manufacturers. There's yeah. nobody has any inventory. Yeah. So so that's the thing. And then, you know, I, I hear from customers all the time, you know, they 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 don't order the equipment, they don't follow the budget, and then they're like, Oh, but can you guys do something, pull some strings to get it? It's like, you know, you sat on that estimate. You didn't follow what we, the, 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 the game plan that we gave you. You didn't follow that. You didn't follow the budget. And now you want us to pull some strings. There is no strings to be pulled. There are no the, strings. The <laughs> if, whole... You know, if a car does not exist and it <laughs> takes time to build one, we can't get you one. <laughs> No, I, you know, it's a, I'm just a man. I think, quite honestly, Nadine, a lot of people feel as if 
their MSP is only dedicated to them, not thinking that they have 20, 30 other customers to take care of. And, you know, when you're thinking, oh, this is an emergency now, well, <laughs> get in line. It's probably an emergency for 15 other companies too. Yeah. So, but if you if you would have been, you know, forward thinking and when we suggest, hey, dot, 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 and I'm like, okay, we don't know. This is why we hired these guys. So let's follow these, you know, exactly. recommendations. And, you know, that doesn't happen. And now it becomes an emergency that, quite honestly, we're at the mercy of the manufacturers. Exactly. You know? And and that's what the CIO's role is. And, in, in, yep. in, you know, one of the five roles is, is the CIO. And that's what the CIO does. Is it does the budgeting. It makes recommendations on when to get the hardware, when to buy yep. stuff, when to uh, change equipment. Uh, technology changes so fast. Um, we we had a, a prospect where it was a it was a sister company of a client of ours, and we got them a, a new router firewall. And it's been like uh, I think last last December was when when the router arrived at the site and we are waiting for them to give us give us the go ahead to to come in and put the new router in place they're working with another IT provider and the other IT provider is not approving it and just the other day they wanted to test their failover they have two internet circuits so they wanted to test the failover and their IT provider said they can't do the test because that's not their router and come to figure out that was their router. That's the original router that they had because they never approved the new router. So it's like, so 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 we, so we so I told them, look, I'll send somebody on site and we will physically unplug the cable to see if internet keeps working, that it fails over. And if it doesn't, then we can get with their old provider or the, their other provider and say, hey, you guys need to fix it because that's their router. We never put the new router in place. But, yeah. but the thing is, you know, the decision was already made to get the router to put it in place, but somebody along the chain of command is kind of dragging their feet, not approving, go ahead and get this done. And now we're in a situation where uh, the, the the current provider who's putting up the roadblocks doesn't want to take the risk of, of taking the primary circuit offline because they could lock themselves out because they're not sure if the secondary circuit is working. They can test it, you know, I mean, pretty much all of our equipment, we can test it ahead of time, you know, prove to ourselves that the second, uh, 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 the failover connection is working before we disconnect the primary. But anyway, so so the thing is, the process is where it's all at. And I think it's in any business, it's the process that matters. The good businesses from the businesses that fail. What's the major difference? It's not people. Everybody has access to the same type of people. The talent pool, everybody has access to that, right? It's not the tool set, the tools. Everybody has access to the tools. Everybody has the same tools, right? It's the process that's different. Every company has its own process, and that's what makes and breaks companies. Yeah. Here it is. So I think with that, uh, Mac, we'll call it a day, and I'll put the link in, in, in the video here uh, so people can get some of these reports. Uh, it's on our website. If you go into uh, our website, I think it's called publications and then reports. Uh, just go ahead and uh, download the reports uh, that, that you want. There's, there's a bunch of reports out there. Uh, so uh, until next week, everybody have a great day. And uh, ladies we'll and gentlemen, week. if this video compels you to finally talk to Nadine, email me, Mac, M-A-C-K at PCSN.net so we can get you on this calendar because I tell you right now, this calendar is Booked. So if yeah, you like, and, hey, listen, yeah, yeah. The, the, the reason why Mac brings this up is uh, we get so many calls that uh, I just get booked up, and um, I'm not at a point where I want you know somebody else who doesn't have the overall big picture to talk to prospects about the direction, right? And uh, so if you are interested, get with Mac, get get a time slot allotted. Uh, so that way it's reserved yep. and we can always make alterations, yep. but at least uh, we can pencil it in so, so you don't miss a spot. Um, 
But other than that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, great talking. Uh, we have fun in these chats. I love and, them. Uh, I love them. Hopefully we helped uh, some of you. And uh, once you see the reports, uh, hopefully it'll help you make the right decision. Have a good one. See you later, guys. Bye.